All right, so I'm here in Pacifica with my friend Mark, and we're gonna do some painting here. Uh, it was supposed to be like light winds, but uh, the kind of the wind's picking up, but we're not gonna let that stop us. Uh, so we're just gonna look around and find a composition. Also too, there's obviously, you can see it's kind of foggy. That's supposed to burn off, and it's supposed to be uh, sunny soon too, so. All right, so we're gonna look around and see what we can find. Okay, so Mark is being really good. He's uh, doing sketches. All right, so you think you got it figured out what you want to do? I think so. So I'm thinking something along there, an eight by 10. I like the mountains. I particularly like the pier and kind of use that as a, maybe some kind of focal point and to orient everything else kind of around that, so. Cool. Yeah. So are you seeing any challenges in this scene, stuff that you think might be difficult that you're trying to work out in your head before starting? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little intimidated by the just the scope of the scene. I mean, there's just so much ocean and kind of a vast spectrum of land to cover that, uh, you know, I feel a little more comfortable sometimes if it's a small little, you know, just one tree or a smaller scene. So this one's definitely a challenge. So it's, I think the challenge is how to simplify the shapes that I see and not be intimidated by all the detail or just by how big things are. They still, eventually, all, everything comes down to just simple shapes. So exactly. Trying to see them. You could probably break this down into five simple shapes. You've got the sky, the mountains, uh, the water, the darker water, the white water, and then the land along here. Um, but everything is really close in value, so that could be a challenge too, but yeah, looks good. All right, so I am gonna do a different view. Uh, Mark's actually looking south i'm going to be looking north um and let me show you all right so i'm thinking of doing something like this i usually like to include the horizon but if i did that uh i don't know then it's kind of like bottom heavy so what i might do is you know exclude the horizon but then you know the water that's in the top here i'm going to really lighten up the value create a lot of atmosphere uh, but yeah, maybe something, maybe something like that. All right, so the sun is supposed to come out. I'm gonna map in these rocks first, and then, you know, hopefully by the time I get this thing laid out, there'll be some light to work with. Uh, basically, I just m mapped out where all the rocks were in a very loose fashion and then I just spent about 15 minutes trying to detail the rocks more carefully. Um, I think part of what makes a painting like this interesting is all the irregularities in the rocks. Uh, there is this section here, this uh, rock on the bottom. I don't know, I might move that over more just because this area of the rock uh, which is like right in here. I don't know, I, I just don't think it's that interesting. And I don't want, you know, half of it to be rock, like exactly half of the painting to be rocks. So by pushing this rock over, maybe that might work.
Okay, so it's kind of a mess. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about, but um, I kind of shortened this cliff right here and I'll add some rocks in here. But this way I've got, you know, one starting here, one here, and then uh, I also changed the bottoms because they were the same. This might lead the eye more in to the composition. But I'm gonna start laying in darks and see what happens. All right, so I've had a lot of people ask how I use Liquin, and I'm gonna start using Liquin uh, for my darks here. And so, typical mixture, ultramarine blue, glycerin crimson, makes a nice transparent dark. I just dip in, mix it in until it's kind of nice and loose for sketching. That's really all I do with the Liquin. Okay, so I came in with the darks and just kind of defined where the rocks are. And I think I'm happy with this pattern. Uh, I really kind of enjoy sort of tracing out the minute changes in the rocks. That's part of the reason I painted on a larger panel. If I paint on a smaller panel, then it's harder to get all these little interesting irregularities, which I think ultimately um, contribute a lot to the painting. So. Uh, I think I'm good and uh, so I'm gonna keep going all right so how are you doing here looks like you got some colors uh, roughed in there yeah I got the colors roughed in and then now I'm trying I'm trying to premix all my colors before I jump in and start painting that seems to keep me from getting in trouble I, can... uh, I, I think premixing is yeah it can be really helpful for sure to see if they all harmonize there on my palette and then hopefully it shows up do you um when you premix do you premix and then hold and then like hold up your palette to mat or your uh, palette knife to match the color yeah so yeah yeah that's what but i do you, too but here's something i often have a problem with is things in the distance right often i want to lighten them but like those mountains are pretty dark back there yeah so i have to keep things dark and distant at the same time right i, I don't know by adding maybe paints gray to it or something to yeah still keep it distant because i don't want too much chroma pulling it forward well one thing that i noticed is that when i'm painting like uh when i match with when i like say when i use a palette knife to match yeah. is that the the values the color is close but the values tend to be too dark so in other words if you were to like match the value with your your knife let me sh i'll show this like you know hold it up and match it say you've got the values matched then when i put it on my panel it seems uh, it seems too dark. Too dark. You have to, right? Do you notice that too? Yeah. You almost have to exaggerate the lightness of it. Exactly. So you can get the, you can get the, um, what should we say, the hue, right? But the value is off. Yeah. But it's still helpful for, for the hue. But then, yeah, I noticed like, now that's not true with darks though. Like darks seem to be okay. It's just when they start approaching mid uh, value and then getting lighter, but the light ones, yeah, you match the value. It's way too dark for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, looks good. I'll okay. check back with you in a bit. Cool. All right, so I'm going to do some pre-mixing too, and I want to lay in the water um, so that I can, you know, sort of indicate where the white water is. Now, I want to make sure that the value difference between the white water, obviously I have white here, that's going to be my lightest light. Um, and I want to make sure that the value difference between the water, the white water and the darker water is kind of, uh, you know, close. It doesn't have to be exact. I can tune it up later. Anyway, so I'm using a blue green here, which I'm making out of ultramarine and adding a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to it. All right, and I'm going to go in thin with this. And like I said, I'm just going to cover the panel uh, just so I can start establishing values. Uh, in other words, I'm going to need to leave for the white water and I'm just going to kind of leave a, like a random, like some random shapes for that. I could fine tune it afterwards. But see, that's already given me a feeling of what the pattern of white water is going to look like, uh, which is kind of a key component in this painting. 
There's like a wave right there, maybe. Uh, I don't see. And basically, the white water is my lightest light, so I'm going to be keying. I'm keying the painting to that, meaning I'm going to uh, adjust all my values according to that white water. Now I'll keep some white water uh, maybe in here. Actually, I kind of want this whole area to be lighter. And then this darker. If this is too light down here, it'll draw the eye too much. So I want to keep it darker down here. Mark and I were just talking about how it seems like the ocean is kind of pushing against this side of the panel. And if you look out here, you know, you could kind of make this more of an arc, if that makes sense. So I was suggesting he's got plenty of room. So if he maybe made it more of an arc in here, then it wouldn't feel like it's crowding the left side. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> make bold moves. Wow, look at it. I love it. And then up here too, right? That's good, that's a good start there. And then up, yeah, and then up there, make it kind of, I know you don't want to mess up your pier. No, uh, that's okay. Yeah, maybe even, maybe even darker. Cause if you look over there, look how dark that, see how th that, the last bit really slopes off to the right. Yeah. That last bit of cliffs. So, so make that even darker back here. Yeah, I would say really... the, the dark beach color here sloping off like then yeah, like right there. It really curves. Yeah, see right. that? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you could already see that that's starting to look yeah. more uh, looks yeah, I think it looks better. More inviting for the eye. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't create that tension right at the edge. Yeah. Right? So right, I'll come back and check with you. All right, so I'm using one brush for this whole painting. It's like uh, number 10 natural bristle that's totally worn down on one side. It's in poor condition, but it's exactly what I need. And I'm just looking for interesting shifts in temperature in the rocks while keeping, you know, value in mind. Uh, just having fun looking for those little variations. Um, and it's a long process, but it's, uh, like I said, it's an enjoyable one.
All right, so I'm back in the studio. Here's a look at the final product. And I think it actually worked to have this, um, you know, this rock or this set of cliffs here pushed back. I think it does kind of create some movement in this direction. I also used the white water for that as well. There's kind of a white water path going like maybe like that. And then even a hint of it out here. So it goes off into the distance. And then I suppose some would say maybe it comes back down the cliff, back into the composition. But in any case, I do like the fact that the white water kind of leads the eye out. And I also kind of downplayed in this area, I didn't want to have it super bright down here because I didn't want the eye to be drawn there. I think the lightest spot is just right around in here. All right, so I had a great time painting with Mark today. Uh, he's going to take his painting home and possibly do a little bit of studio touch up on it. Um, I will put a link to his Instagram in the description below. Uh, but as usual, thanks for hanging out, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Stay creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.